Held during the third full week of October each year, National School Bus Safety Week is an active and evolving public education program for parents, students, teachers, motorists, and school bus operators to join forces and address the importance of school bus safety. School Bus Safety Week is very important to us. It gives us an opportunity to strongly um, tune in to re-educating not only the public, but specifically the children about safely loading and unloading the bus, safety zones in and around the bus. Also gives us an opportunity to reach out to the public and re remind them and re-emphasize that they should treat our school bus lights as a traffic light. We're communicating to them, yellow lights is communicating that they need to slow down because we're approaching a school stop. And when that red light comes on, you need to stop for the safety of all the children. That's what we're trying to communicate to them during the week of school bus safety. Although Bus Safety Week is held annually, here at Marion County Public Schools, we are concerned with the safety of our students every single day. Every day, every day I drive, um, I have a route stop on 17th Street at Regents Bank there, and they pass me every day. They, the stop, um, I put my yellow caution light on where I'm supposed to 200 feet, and uh, they see it. Some of them speed up so they don't have to stop, and the others that's going in the other direction, they don't even stop, they don't even think about stopping. I really would appreciate if they did stop because this could be your kid that I'm picking up that another motorist come by and you know possibly hit them or anything and you just should stop. I mean give us a few seconds to get these kids on the bus, get their names called and get them seated and we'll move on out, of, out your way. But I think that everybody should pay attention and stop when you see a school bus with their red um, out. You need to stop. Lights are flashing. But also with that for a safety you know I want motorists to know that you, once all my kids get off my bus, I'm not just going to pull off. I'm going to check all my mirrors and I'm going to make sure. I try to count my kids as they get off, so I have to check my mirrors before I just pull off. I got to make sure that I don't have a child bent down somewhere picking up something. So I need to let them know that also, that I'm just not going to take off as soon as I shut my door and, you know, put my stop arm in. I'm still going to just, you know, kind of visualize first before I just move. So that's one thing they, you know, need to know also. We can't just, you know, take off just because, you know, the kids are off and you think everything is cool. We have to look and make sure. Some of the things that happen happens also within the schools. We have schools that ask for us to park and stage buses at their schools so that they can educate the children. They'll take a class out at a time and go over your loading, your unloading procedures one at a time using the handrail how far out to stand away from the bus and showing them where those safety zones because the drivers will lose sight of them if they're they're too close to the bus um, because the mirrors don't catch the little people so those some of the things we do aside from the drivers re-emphasizing when they get them to school or when they load in the afternoon to reiterate um, the safety loading um, to congratulate or to reward the students who are doing a very good job hopefully to catch attention of those that may be sliding a little bit to get them involved. We greatly appreciate our school bus drivers and our bus aides. They do an awesome job in trying to increase safety awareness among our children to keep everybody safe, so they're greatly appreciated. Marion County Public Schools is one of the largest supporters of the United Way. Last week on Halloween, there was a friendly competition to see who could scare up the best chili in the district. Who doesn't love Halloween and who doesn't love fall? And it's really no better way to bring people together and it's also people helping people, which is one of my favorite things. We hope everybody enjoys it, first of all, um, and we hope to make, um, you know, at least the $500 or more to give back to, you know, the families in our community. And the winner was... Okay, so the judges tasted everybody's and they loved everybody's, but they loved Sherry's the most. <laughs> the annual Ocali Country Days is set for November 11th and 12th at the Silver River Museum from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Along with the usual arts, crafts, and exhibits, there is something new this year. 
I'm Scott Mitchell, I'm the director here at the Silver River Museum, and I'm standing in front of our brand new uh, wood-fired ceramic kiln. Uh, the design is called Mana Bigama. It fires pottery, runs on uh, firewood as you see behind me, and it takes a day to load it, a day to fire it, a day to cool, and then on the fourth day you open it and see what you have. Traditionally in the southeast and in fact across North America, um, potters would have made everything from butter churns to crocks to, to jugs for uh, drinks and liquids, storage vessels, and this is where people would um, get their pottery. So we've added it here at the Silver River Museum and we um, will be adding it into our primarily our fourth grade Florida history curriculum where the fourth graders come over to the old Pioneer Village and they'll get to stop by and, and learn about how this works and why it was important back in the old days. Uh, but we'll also have students come out from Westport High School uh, who will fire um, ceramic art pieces that they've created um, and it will be part of their advanced um, ceramic arts classes. And so they'll get some experience on a wood-fired kiln which are fairly rare these days. There's not a lot of people that run them. Most pottery kilns run with uh, either gas or electric. The numbers on the bricks at the front of the kiln um, help us keep track of those bricks. They're loose and we take them off and that's basically the door of the kiln. There's two layers of bricks there. So they have to go up and down in a particular pattern because they're cut in specific shapes. Um, especially when you get into the arch behind that first layer. Um, so that whole front wall will be unstacked to access the kiln. It doesn't have a door that swings away. Um, the white blocks on the side of the kiln are um, plugs for peepholes. So Deb has Kevlar gloves and she can pull those plugs out and peep into the kiln to monitor the progress of the firing. So as the kids come over for their field trip in Florida history, they go through the old buildings, they learn about the blacksmith shop and this making cane syrup and how the pioneers lived. This will be yet another stop. Uh, so it will tie into those social studies standards for fourth grade. We can also use it for um, the high school level kids, uh, not only for the arts and for social studies, but for science in terms of how the clay changes, how the glazes behave, uh, the chemical reactions that take place. And so um, it's useful from several different viewpoints in terms of curriculum. Exclusive is a very unique event where uh, we get all the lights to be turned off. Every single line, every net, everything that's white gets turned into a neon color. And the most amazing part about it is that every age level or ability level gets to participate on the same court while just watching a single neon ball coming across. That's what makes it so amazing. It's loud music. Everybody's having a fantastic time. It's a massive tennis party and like I said, you don't know who's across from the net. All you see is this tennis ball which makes it remarkably awesome. We were the first um, uh, uh, facility to host it and it was absolutely amazing. We had a fabulous turnout and the response was incredible because we had so many members and non-members requesting for this event to happen again and we're fortunate enough to partner up with Take Stock in Children and, and be able to host this event. It's a cool thing for families as well as individuals across all ability levels to be able to participate. You get to play with the pros, with your partners, with your friends, with your kids, so it's an awesome time. Bellevue, Dunallen, and Vanguard all host opening round playoff games Friday night. The Rattlers welcome Menendez to the Snake Pit, Trenton will play at Ned Love Field in Dunallen, and Gainesville visits Booster Stadium in a rematch from four weeks ago. Vanguard rallied to win that one 31-24 on the road and has not allowed a single point at home all year. All games kick off at 7.30. At the beginning of the Coupons for Education campaign this year, we decided that we wanted to highlight the student that sold the most books for the district. So the best thing that we came up with was the idea of placing the student's face on the cover of the following year's coupon book. We still had county incentives this year. We gave away uh, gift cards because we found that the kids were more apt to decide where they wanted to go and shop. So that was still a part of the process, but we added the extra layer of 
uh, the coupon contest winner, you know, the highest seller, because we felt like that would be something that would kind of stimulate the whole idea of selling those books at the schools. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm standing here with Susanna Eatman, who is our Coupon for Education top seller for Dr. N.H. Jones Elementary School. We have a special surprise. Look, Savannah. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Savannah. How are you? It's My name's Mrs. Good. Annetti. Good it's nice to meet you. Well, Savannah and boys and girls, I wanted to let you know that Savannah sold more coupons for education books than anyone in Marion County. How many books did you sell, Savannah? 120. She sold 120 books. That's amazing. And so that's lots of money that's coming back here to help Dr. N.H. Jones. I think this morning went great. And I'm so excited because the amount of, of money that was raised alone at N.H. Jones was close to $17,000 for the school. So that's enough to provide technology or anything else that the school would need that might not co be covered in any other aspect. So um, little severe. Anna was just fabulous and it was a lot of teamwork but um, she really embraced the whole idea of selling those books and um, she's helped her school quite a bit.